Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today on LandlordsJournal.com. Today is December the 4th, 2011, and today is our Christmas special. Um, today we're finding motivated sellers um, in today's buyer's market. Um, are we being a Scrooge, or is it a smart business decision? Um, after all, this is a business, and um, whether it's Christmas or not, we all have decisions to make, and Fortunately or unfortunately for some people, some of us make better decisions than other ones. Um, personally, um, I don't consider myself a Scrooge, but we all have uh, varying uh, opinions on the topic. But anyway, today is December the 4th, 2011, and be on the lookout um, in the future on our website, LandlordsJournal.com. We're going to have a, a radio podcast, um, and we'll you'll be able to call into our show. So anyway, without further ado, here's our show. Thank you. Well, hello, America. Um, thanks for joining us again at LandlordsJournal.com. Today we're going to uh, uh, be talking uh, with about uh, finding motivated sellers. Uh, finding motivated sellers uh, that, that have a... When you're looking for houses, uh, you want to find a, somebody that's motivated to sell it to you. Well, that makes sense. What do we really mean by that anyway? A motivated seller. Now, what isn't, is a motivated isn't just seller? anybody that wants to sell their house, aren't they motivated? They say, I want to sell my house. No, you want someone who's desperate to sell their house. Mm -hmm. nice someone who's desperate. <laughs> somebody who has a strong desire to sell exactly. their house. Exactly. Right. Someone needs to sell their house quickly and for as cheap as possible. Very motivated. In that yes, house. exactly. For various yeah. reasons. Someone who wants to wants to sell their house quickly. And there are several reasons why they might want to do that. Um, one might be because of financial it, financial situations. Um, for example, especially nowadays with our economy um, being on the being on the outs for the last three or four years and not being projected to recover anytime soon, a lot of people are, are being forced to leave their homes for um, less expensive accommodation. Um, they have financial institutions knocking on their door, they have creditors knocking on their door. Uh, they're being pressured from many different avenues um, to make various payments and they're not able to do that. So a lot of people are um, being forced to sell their homes, which is a sad situation, don't get me wrong, uh, but, th but it is what it is. And so those people, if they are looking to sell and get out from under a house, you could be just what they're looking for. And so that could be a win-win um, for, for both parties in that situation. Um, so we're on the, the which are we on the, the white, is what? The red zone. The red zone. Yeah, I mean, so all these different changes are the various financial situations. Mm -hmm. If somebody, uh, yeah, if somebody has uh, has uh, lost their job or changed their job, um, moving out of town, um, they, uh, um, somebody that has um, lost a uh, lost a loved one, um, and uh, now. Uh, and, and don't need a, as big of a house as they have right now. Um, uh, maybe there's been a divorce. Um, uh, maybe the, maybe there's maybe they need a bigger house. Maybe the family is ha, has grown. Maybe maybe some uh, some children have moved back home, or maybe they have a, a new baby. Um, so. Uh, I think you need to find people that are under a little bit, <coughs> under a little bit of pressure because of these various situations. There's pressure uh, because they lost their job or they gained a job. They need to do things quickly, you know. And if people are under pressure to do things quickly, they are more likely to um, let you have. A say, I was going to say dance to your tune, right? But, <laughs> but they're more willing to negotiate. You know, they're going to be much more flexible. If somebody is okay to wait it out, you know, for a year or two years, they're not in any hurry, well then you're not going to get such a great deal, you know, on that property. So you need to find somebody that wants to close quickly, needs to get the money, even if it's just a fraction of the money that they think they 
ought to get. Those are the ones that you're looking for. What is the terminology, or is that the cliche, or whatever word I'm looking for? Desperation, desperation breeds necessity. Is that correct? Is that what sounds correct? good? Sounds right. Sounds good. So you want to make sure that you're not desperate, because when you're desperate, you do things that right. you otherwise wouldn't do. So you want to make sure that you're not desperate. But anyway, that's what these motivated sellers are. Motivated basically means desperate. And unfortunately, these motivated sellers are desperate sellers, and that's what, as as real estate uh, investors, that's what you want. You want motivated, desperate sellers. You need to unload their, and it's just, it's a, it's, unfortunately, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not pretty, but unfortunately, that's that's what it is. Well, I want to clear up one thing. I, I have heard other people comment that with this type of a scenario, you're taking advantage of people, and you're doing things that are underhanded and dirty, and people look, look at you like there's something wrong, but that is not the case. You know, the people that we have, the motivated sellers we have dealt with, by far, they have been very willing to work with us. They have wanted to work with us, you know, for various situations. We are not taking advantage of them. If they weren't going to sell to us, they would, number one, still be in a pinch, or number two, they'd be selling to somebody else. So I think that's important to realize. Oh, yeah, we want to make it a win-win situation. Yeah. We don't want to steal anyone's home. Yeah. We don't want to make it, we want to make it a win-win situation. I mean, after all, they have an asset that they want to dispose of. We're not, we're not taking it and getting, giving them, they're not getting nothing in return. There's no negative stereotype. No, there's no, we're not doing anything. So don't let anybody tell you that. No, this no, is no, not Because no. <laughs> you will hear that. I, I've oh, yeah, that you before. do. You've heard that. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's bogus. I mean, there's, a lot of under, there's a lot of underhanded ways that people try to get yes. your, your home, people's home. And they are, they are actually trying to steal it. This is, but no, this, this is, is not. A, this is this is all legal transaction. It's not. We're not doing the. You know, we're not trying to to, to, to rip anyone off. Or I mean, it's all up on the up and up. And we're helping them with the problem, and they're helping us get something. It's just. It's basically uh, the house is a commodity. Like you go to a to a, a trade show or a flea market, and the supply and demand, depending on how how much the, the, the seller wants to sell it, how much you want it. It'll, which that's not really supply and demand, but it's, it'll dictate the price. So it's basically what it is. It's just like in a commodity-driven market. If the, if the seller wants to sell it, he needs to unload it, he needs to turn it over, then you'll get it cheaper. And this is the same. It's desperate. I don't mean desperate as in, in a bad way, like desperate as in we're trying to take advantage of you, and, you know, whatever. It's the same as in a commodity-driven market. No one would look at you and say, oh, my God, you tried to get that from that, that yard sale peddler so they want stuff. you to take it. Yeah, they want you to take it. I mean, they're giving it to us willingly. We're not trying to mm -hmm. underhand it. We're not trying to deceive them or, or trick anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. it's all we're, I mean, we're, we try to have a business with integrity mm -hmm. um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's all on the, you know, and I don't want to get a reputation of trying to do that. If, I may, if I may give an example, a really good example, we um, <coughs> bought a duplex from a gentleman that owned the property, it was a rental, he fixed it up, but he got really sick, and his wife got really sick, and they had to move out of state, and they could not care for this property anymore, and it was going downhill, they lost control of the property because they didn't live there. Exactly. Uh, the family, I think the, the children actually came in and, and became executors of the estate, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and the children, adult children, did not want to have to deal, who lived out of state, had their own lives. They don't want to deal with their parents' rentals. They need to get rid of this, you know? Their the smart ones do. The smart ones And they do. were desperate. I mean, they desperate, were desperate as in, <coughs> not if they were bad people or, or, or like you said, I mean. Not only did we get it for a steal. They could have been, they could have been more desperate had they lost mm -hmm. further control. Exactly. I mean, we got they it for a great a good price, thing. and they got to wash their hands of the situation and move on with their lives. You know, their parents were done with that, they didn't have that stone hanging around their neck anymore with taxes and upkeep and management fees and low life renters. It you quickly know, could have turned into a liability. Oh, oh it was a lot. What if it burned down? Because well, yeah, right the house stuff. next door was a, a nuisance. You don't know. Exactly. It could have very quickly turned into. You could make a good thing, it could have turned into a bad thing very quickly. So we got a good price. They got rid of it. And that was worth that's what they wanted. Down. How did we find that property? We found that in the obvious way possible, didn't we? Yep. We asked her, one, uh, so so back to how we're going to find these sellers. I guess one one way is uh, the most obvious is is what we how we found this guy was through a uh, real estate broker. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, we 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 told we we told the real estate broker what we were interest, interested in. Mm -hmm. 
that we we wanted these kind of property. Right. We wanted these kind of properties. Um, I, uh, of listings, I guess you could look and see how long a property's been on the market, see if it's see if it's been reduced, see if the price has been reduced. Well, and I think that I'm going to sidetrack a little bit here, but it was a it was a it was an agent who was who understood truly understood what we were looking for mm -hmm. and was not trying to fit us into the standard go buy a retail home. Right. Mold. She knew we many there. of them. You have to train. Them. Many of them do, and he was he was not like that. Yeah. Um, this was a uh, he knew exactly that we yeah. were, that we we <coughs> we presented ourselves as commercial investors, not as interested in a, a home for our own re, uh, residents, and and uh, he 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 was in tune to exactly what kind of product. We wanted to see, and he, he knew the story. If we're talking about the same thing here, he knew that story of the family. He knew what was behind it, yeah. and that was totally under our radar. Right. We didn't know anything about the property until right. that that person brought it to our yeah. attention. My well, memory, it, my it seemed to me that it was on his books a long time. Maybe the property. It was. So yeah. 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 They couldn't unload they it. Couldn't unload it. So, so. And that's where real estate. That's where they. That's where they, they, there's an advantage because a lot of times a real estate agent, especially the listing agent, if you can establish a relationship with a commercial real estate agent, and I say commercial because a lot of times the real estate agents, even well, usually brokers will understand, but even so, a lot of times they don't understand commercial real estate, and there's a difference between commercial real estate or investment real estate yeah, versus, versus, like you said, versus well, versus what you said, um, it's still under the commercial umbrella, but anyway, um, versus what you said. Um, uh, investing for your in, for individuals or whatever, and it's very important. Even as a real estate agent, a lot of times they won't know really how to how, how to evaluate investment property because it's very it can get very complex. And at the same time, the investor doesn't know a lot about commercial real estate. They're like, oh, I need to buy this house, and uh, because I, everyone, everyone says it's a good thing, and everyone says that you should do that and, as an investment property, and hand it over to a management company. And, you know, I watch Carlton Sheets and I watch Landlord's Journal and they say buy a house, buy a house, and investment, 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 investment. But they don't truly understand how it works and money and all that kind of stuff. So it's important that you have a real estate agent that understands commercial property. Okay. But that's where real estate agents come in hand. So that's yeah. one place, that's one, one way to place. find one of these. And then, uh, so what are, what are other ways uh, to find one of these uh, seller? I think a newer uh, place that some people may not have been expecting or, th or this came into being without this potential even being thought of when it was, when it was created is Craigslist. I mean, mm -hmm. Craigslist is this massive database. Of, it connects sellers and buyers, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's what Craigslist does. And it's pretty much anything. But nowadays, you're seeing more and more property um, on, on Craigslist. And if you look in your local, if you go on Craigslist.com, you can, I'm sure, find some local sellers who are willing to talk, you know, who are willing to, to deal with you. So it, would, it wouldn't hurt to make contact, you know, to call those numbers and, and see what you come up with. Because all it takes is one or two good deals, you know. You you may call 10 people or 20 people, but hey, if you get one or two that work in your favor, that's a success. That's, that's really good. Um, we have done that. We have looked at properties. Have we bought off of Craigslist? We have looked at properties We've on looked, Craigslist, but we didn't. And some of the, uh, yeah, and some of the, some of the places that that we found um, were where that we discovered were were, were uh, distressed sellers were having a having a moving sale. Mm -hmm. They're having a whole house sale, or they were having. Um, and they may not. They, they may not even. Be listing it as, as as their houses for sale. They they may have some other something else that they're listing as. And we need to take a short break for our, for our sponsor message. We're very quickly. We'll be back in about thirty seconds because we only have one sponsor right now, right? So we'll be back. Hello, America. We're back again. Uh, we uh, we were talking uh, we were talking about uh, finding motivated uh, sellers and. We had been uh, talking about one place to do that, had been um, on uh, 
Craigslist. Uh, looking up, looking at Craigslist, uh, looking for, for for listings there. Is that for just uh, for sellers? I mean, is that just? Um, oh, buyers could and you, sellers. Yeah. Could you uh, could you also post that you want to sell? I mean, that you want to buy. That you're out to buy. Why not? Yeah. Where, well, I, yeah. I would yeah. post it in the. Uh, where would you post that? And they in the same section where they're posting, maybe. That's interesting. We get calls every once in a while, and I actually got a call um, one time for someone who was scouting. I think they hired someone to to scout through the, the rental listings to find out if you're interested in selling. I think I told you guys. I don't think I, I think I know Bob. But so they hired someone to go through and say, "Hey, you want to sell this house? You want to sell this house? You want to sell this house?" So that is a good way to, to find cold calling, cold calling cold people on Craigslist because a lot of times people when they put it on Craigslist or in the paper they're motivated sellers for whatever reason. I mean, they're want they're obviously want to sell their property, so that's an excellent place um, to find leads and to rent places too. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of traffic to this day even when we don't have listings on Craigslist on our website. I think another another great way to 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 do it is. Uh, is to go to estate sales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can actually see the house before anybody exactly. realizes. Um, you know, they might not even have an idea of a uh, formulated plan as to what they're going to do with the house. And that's related back to some of these other situations. The estate sales is like a family member passed away and the children have to come in and clean out the home, which is a very time intensive, labor intensive, emotionally intensive you know, thing to do. Uh, they're probably looking to sell the house. I mean, that actually happened to my family, so I, I can I can speak about that. Um, also, the estate sale somebody has to maybe move to another living facility, like an assisted living facility, a nursing home. They have to downsize. You know, in other words, they're going to be motivated because they're going to need that cash. They're going to need some cash to help sustain them in in their new living living situation. So, estate sales can be very very yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole, like I said, profits and probate. I mean, it sounds more, I mean, it sounds morbid and ugly and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, a lot of people do scout the probate records and all that stuff to find people things are just not going on probate and, and find opportunities to snatch things up. Now, if you do the obituaries, and this is a whole other topic in, in and of itself, um, but which I do want to discuss. I mean, we all talked about, but um, if you Start through a bit if you like. If you go to the obituaries and find a um, a person that, that that obviously there's going to be an estate sale or they're going to sell the house or whatever, you have to wait until the person goes through probate before you can actually acquire the house. Correct, Bob. Well, it is, but it might be a good time to start before the probate. Well, yeah, of course, yeah, process, of course. In order to a lot, of times, a lot of times people will. What I'm saying is, a lot of times people will skip that part and go straight to the, the courthouse and find out. Uh, uh, people that have finished the probate process and then uh, then approach them because they know that they don't have to wait. They can, the things are redundant. The creditors already been contacted. And everything's been squared away, so they skip that step. Now, I mean, it depends on you. A lot of times, you know, me personally, I wouldn't want to approach someone after if that's happened. You know, I want to give them time to grieve. And in the state of West Virginia, probate typically lasts three months. Um, so, you know, wherever you're watching this from, the states vary. But um, personally, I would rather do it once it's gone through probate, or wait a month after the happen after it happens, and not start the obituary for things like that. No. Um, how about can you can you uh, can you find it? Can you find it by uh, after um, after doing this for a while? Some houses you can, some houses that you see you can you can tell by the house that it's uh, well the exterior uh, yes. distressed. Uh, Sometimes we have just driven around our town and we have noticed that uh, maybe the grass is really high in um, in a yard or perhaps the exterior of the house looks like it needs some upkeep painting or gutters falling down shingles uh, on the roof uh, looking kind of old. Maybe there's uh, lots of newspapers on the porch. Maybe there's uh, lots of flyers in the uh, mailbox. So anything that looks like the person's not living there, a house, that should raise a red flag. Like, why isn't somebody taking care of this house? Why isn't somebody living there? 
We've driven around and I've gone up in yards and peeked in lots of windows um, just because I'm curious. And sometimes that works out, and sometimes the land, the homeowner is, is just not very really in the night. We need they are, and they're just not very. Um, they're they're not very tidy homeowners. That brings uh, us to our next sponsor. <laughs> in, well, and that's uh, that's and what, timing is Winchester, Winchester right? Don't do it. After, <laughs> don't do it after it's dark like, either. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it after dark. But that only happened to me a couple of times. And I, if you run really fast, you know, it's okay. In our little town, there the um, uh, when when a house has been winterized. Uh, when the, pl uh, when the plumbing has been uh, drained and antifreeze has been put in the lines um, in anticipation of, uh, of uh, it being vacant for winter weather, um, oftentimes there's an orange decal that's put on the front oh, yeah. door mm -hmm. um, that uh, you can see this hunter orange dayglow orange decal, um, three by five, from the street, and, and you're saying, and this, and you know, you realize then that the house is, that that house is is mothballed. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and you can, um, <coughs> um, so you can write down the address, you can go to the uh, tax, uh, public records, the tax records, and the find, find the owner, find, find the owner, and if you're yeah. interested, you can contact them. Yeah. Make you a list of those houses, just do a drive by your neighborhood, or I'm certain you'll find some. They're all over the place. You just don't realize it, you know. Um, and, the, and the houses that you want to find for motivated sellers are probably not the ones with standard real estate signs in the yard, unless those signs have been there for two or three years. You know? <laughs> right. Um, That's and, a long time for a sign to be there. And, right. and these days that happens. I'm not. I mean, that yeah. sounds funny, but I'm not being facetious. Sometimes houses are on the market now forever. And actually, the longer the house is on the market, the more motivated that person is going to be uh, to, to, to sell that property. Right, and make sure that when, if there's a sign in front of the house, make sure there's no one living there. Well, you might want to call the real estate and keep it in the windows. Because <laughs> yeah. people still might be living there. <laughs> Just use your best judgment, America. Usually that works in my favor. Um, but, you know, most of the time it's okay. Um, so, let's see. Where are we going with that? Uh, we've had some people, uh, we've had um, some property management folks um, bring us uh, bring us some listings, some of their, from clients of theirs that, that have, yeah. Uh, yeah, we want to get rid of their rental property. Well, we've actually, we purchased. Well, that was, that, that was, that was actually, we, it was funny because we'd actually solicited them solicited them before he but it was actually happened to be someone he managed anyway. Well we are out of time. Okay. Well Talks another Well we hope, we hope this will uh, help you America know. find some motivated sellers for, yeah. for your business. We hope we've given you several things to, to think about and as always you can check us out on landlordsjournal.com for more information, some more detailed information. But uh, we'll probably be talking about these topics future uh, broadcasts in more detail or reference them to uh, some related topics. But please join us again next week, next time, uh, for more interesting uh, real estate oriented topics. And we'll okay. probably see everyone before Christmas, I'm sure. I hope so. Okay, bye bye, Merry America. America. Thank you very much. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, happy winter solstice. Bye bye. <laughs> and we thank you for joining us once again on this beautiful cold December 4th 2011 winter pre-Christmas episode um, our landlords journal.com Christmas special where we talked about how to find motivated uh, sellers um, so we hope you uh, join us again next week we will continue our Christmas presentation before we go on hiatus for the rest of the year and you can always join us on landlordshero.com where you can watch episodes 24 hours a day and participate in our forums continuously. Thank you once again.